What's going on guys, it's Tom or Tops and Wrestling, we're doing a double upload, two days in a row, let's do it. Today, we're going to be discussing what I believe to be the biggest missed opportunity in TNA history and TNA's biggest wasted talent. We are of course going to be talking about Monty Brown. Before we get into it though, I would like to thank my Patreon supporters, Marky D, Alan Barkley, Efren Martin, Gravedigger33, Jonathan Thompson, Cedric Cowan, NX Gamer, First Phil, Jackery Williams, Josh Nolan, Steve Wingfield, Magpie, and Steve. If you guys want to see more exclusive content from me, as well as other perks, check out my Patreon link down below. It would really help me during these trying times. And we very much appreciate it. That list is very much growing. I'm having to read a bunch of names before the video starts. But anyway, let's just get into this video. Let's talk about Monty Brown. Let's stop wasting time. Hey, this is your Olympic hero, Kurt Angle. And you are watching Top 10 Wrestling. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. So who is Monty Brown? Well, Monty Brown, of course, was a professional wrestler. However, before getting involved in the world of wrestling, Monty Brown was involved in the world of American football, or as most of my viewers call it, football. J just football. Y you're wrong to call it that, but that's what you call it. You do you. Monty Brown attended Ferris State University in Big Rapids, Michigan, where he played football for the Ferris State Bulldogs, and he was very successful here, being named MVP in his senior year, and after graduating from Ferris State, he was recruited to the Buffalo Bills, and he played for them professionally in the NFL for about four years, even competing in the Super Bowl in 1994. In 1996, he signed for the New England Patriots, but he lasted less than a year with the Patriots, as he would soon after retire from football due to injury. But Monty Brown stated one thing very interesting about his reasoning for signing with the Patriots. He stated that one of the reasons he signed with them was to be closer to the WWE HQ in Stamford, Connecticut, as Monty was very passionate about wrestling. And four years after retiring from football, he would begin training to become a professional wrestler. Monty Brown began training in 2000 and was trained by Dan the Beast 7 and Sabu and would make his in-ring debut in Michigan's All-Star Wrestling League in 2000 where during this time he would also team with Chris Sabin who would of course go on to join TNA but Chris wasn't the only one who went on to join TNA. In 2002 Monty Brown would debut and make appearances for TNA. This was during TNA's debut year and during the weekly pay-per-view era where many people would come and go and have short-term deals with TNA. Monty Brown came in as a babyface making numerous appearances including challenging Ron the Truth killings for the world title unsuccessfully. However, Monty didn't really connect with the fans as a babyface and made his last appearance for the company in August of 2002 and as I said before, this was TNA's debut year and many wrestlers would come and go from TNA and it seemed Monty Brown was another one of them. It seemed TNA maybe was trying to get that mainstream crossover, you know with him being a former NFL player but it didn't really work out and Monty just didn't connect with the fans. It seemed like that was the end for Monty in TNA, however, Monty Brown would return to the company and reinvent himself. He debuted a new character of being from the Sergenti, along with leopard and tiger print trunks and gear and having mannerisms of a predator animal. He returned in 2004 and began wrestling full time for TNA and he also began to get really over with the fans. This new persona he had was really connecting. By the end of 2004, Pro Wrestling Illustrated had given him Rookie of the Year, which showed how much he had improved and how good he was doing. He would have his first world title match since his return at the first pay-per-view of 2005, Final Resolution, where he would unsuccessfully challenge Jeff Jarrett for the title. Shortly after this though, Monty Brown would actually align himself with Jarrett and turn heel, joining Planet Jarrett, and he would spend the next few months feuding with Jarrett's enemies including DDP, Kevin Nash and AJ Styles, and Monty Brown at this point was a certified main eventer. 
However, this alliance with Jeff Jarrett was fairly short lived, only lasting from March to August as Monty would turn his back on Jarrett and begin pursuing the NWA world title. At Unbreakable in September 2005, Brown would announce his intention to challenge for the world title at Bound for Glory. At Bound for Glory, he competed in a gauntlet for the gold match where the winner would face Jarrett for the title in the main event, but sadly, he lost after eliminating himself. At this point, Monty Brown was so over and at Genesis, he beat Jeff Hardy to earn a world title shot. But it couldn't have came at a more unlucky time, as soon after this, Christian Cage debuted with TNA. Monty Brown and Christian would feud with each other, and Monty would put his title shot on the line against Christian at turning point and lose. Oh god. And at this point, you could tell TNA didn't really know what to do with Brown as he then realigned with Jarrett once again and the two started feuding with Christian and the now newly debuted Sting. They had a tag match at final resolution and lost. And at this point in TNA, the main event scene in TNA was just clogged. You, ha you had the likes of Jarrett, Sting and Christian had just signed, Samoa Joe was there, etc etc. And it seemed as though TNA thought there was no room for Monty Brown. His push couldn't have came at a more unlucky time because the second it seemed he was going to get the world title, Christian came in and TNA shifted their plans towards him. In mid-2006, Monty Brown's TNA contract would expire and he would be out of the company without a single title win. Monty Brown should have been world champion, he was so over with the fans and every TNA fan wanted to see it, but unfortunate timing with signings meant that it never happened. After leaving TNA though, he would make the next logical step in his wrestling career and join the WWE in the ECW brand. Oh. He was given the new name of Marcus Corvon and he became a part of the New Breed stable with Elijah Burke, who would go on to become the Pope, CM Punk, Matt Stryker and Kevin Thorne. However, Monty was only in the WWE for about 9 months. In June 2007, he took a break from WWE due to family reasons and was released 3 months later from his contract after never returning back to the company. And then, right after being released, he officially retired from wrestling. The most major thing he did in the WWE was wrestle at WrestleMania 23 where he and the new breed lost to the ECW originals. But he was also in SmackDown vs Raw 2008 the video game, so at least we can fulfill our Monty Brown fantasy booking dreams in SVR 2008 GM mode. I for sure know that I made him my world champion in my old GM mode saves, I know for a fact that I did that. But yeah, like I said, he left the WWE after having not really done anything and retired from wrestling after complete busts of runs in TNA and WWE through absolutely no fault of his own. It was just pure unluckiness. So in the end, that was the career of Monty Brown, a man who really should have been TNA World Champion and a man that 15 years later, many people look at, many TNA fans look at as one of TNA's biggest missed opportunities. He really should have been world champion. He could have been one of their homegrown stars, but it just wasn't to be. TNA's world title scene at the time truly was just a sea of former WCW and WWE guys other than AJ Styles, and Monty Brown could have been the homegrown guy like I said, and they just failed at it, and I don't know how they failed at it. But either way guys, that's going to do it for this video, so if you did enjoy, then be sure to smack that like button. Um, this video is just over like 8 minutes long, I think it's on 9 minutes right now, because basically they've debuted this new thing on YouTube where you can put mid-rolls on 8 minute plus content, which is great for me because it saves me a lot of time. You don't realise how much that 2 minutes is really worth, that saves me so much bloody time. So in the future, I will try to do more 10 minute videos and whatnot. I think this video might hit 10 minutes anyway, either way. But yeah, expect to see more 8 minute plus content from me. Just to address that by the way, a lot of people complain about how much mid rolls I put on, which I completely understand. The issue is, if I don't put them on, I can't make a living. And this is how I'm earning my money right now. I've, I'm paying rent for a house at the moment. 
I've got I've got a living to make, and this is how I'm doing it. Uh, and the only way I can do that is with mid-roll ads. So I do apologize for that. But either way, I think we're actually going to hit 10 minutes on this video anyway, just with this rambling, which I totally didn't mean. But whatever, let's end this video now. Thanks for watching, guys. If you did enjoy, then be sure to smack that like button. Follow me on Twitter at Top 10 Wrestling. My Instagram is at I'm Tom Bell. Check me out on Patreon for more exclusive posts and to help support me. Exclusive content, all that below. Patreon.com slash Top 10 Wrestling. Like the video if you enjoyed. Comment down below what you want to see next. Subscribe with notifications on. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye and keep on rolling. Kick back. Chilling out, max and relaxing. Summertime with a fantastic kick back. I'm going to crack another cold one. Barbecue chicken almost done. Kick back. Hey, all the shorties came through and my friends came too. We survived at the kick back. Yeah, and we live from the kick back. What's up? What's up? They making fun of me. They say that I don't season my chicken. That ain't true though, because I put the salt and pepper up in it. Not for real. I just cover it in sweet baby ray.